Hi, today's video we're going to take a look at the new starter set for Bolt Action 3rd Edition the Battle of the Bulge. Okay, let's get into it and see what it's inside. So, this is the new starter set um, for Bolt Action 3rd uh, Edition. As we can see from the box cover art, that it is. Um, Germans versus Americans in the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, it's quite a hefty size box, so I'm expecting it to be pretty packed with um, bits and pieces. Uh, and if we look on the back, we know we're getting uh, American infantry in great coats, um, German uh, Falschmager paratroops in winter clothing, and then we also get the Greyhound vehicle. For the Americans, and then there is a ruined uh, building as well, as well as other bits and pieces such as um, tokens, um, the new the new rule book, a starter booklet, um, various other bits and pieces that are needed for the game. So let's get the, the box open and have a look what's inside. So the first thing we get on top is this small booklet about Battle of the Bulge and this goes through some of the information and history around that particular battle. It also goes into assembling your forces so it starts with the um, US infantry and tells you some of the makeup of the infantry and, and how to actually assemble them and the same then goes into the Germans as well in the same manner. It tells you how, um, basically how to work which way to assemble those miniatures for the best options and then we go to um, exact some example forces and then on to scenarios and there are quite a few scenarios to go with and then a little bit on the back about painting your models and then finally some instructions for um, building up Either the M8 or N M20 um, Greyhound armored car. Now the M20 is a light um, scout version that's armed with like 50 caliber. Um, the M8 is armored with an anti-tank weapon. So if you're looking for a bit more punch. The M8 is probably the way to go. And then at the very back, it just gives you some information about where to go next, what sort of things to add to your forces. So, And then we have on the back a play sheet, which is quite useful. Then the next item is the dice bag, just a plain black dice bag, which is fine. And then there's a cardboard cover which is again another play sheet uh, and it also includes a couple of rulers um, I won't bother with a ruler because I, I, um, I use other um, types of rulers but I will use this, so I'll cut this out and make use of the play sheet that's, quite, that's really quite useful so the first piece of plastic sprues we get are for the building and this is a building that's been around for a while um, but from, in bolt action um, I think it's been in quite a number of sets now. Um, I've not had one of these before, so I this for me this is um, seeing this for the first time on this particular um, kit. Um, so I'm going to be quite quite keen to get this built and painted up quite quite quickly. Um, I'm going to be doing the terrain challenge um, over on on tabletop, so this will be part of my terrain challenge um, things I'll be doing for that that particular little challenge. The next thing we have is the sprues for the M8. I'll just take these out of the bag and get a clearer look at them. Um, these have a model kit feel rather than a wall kit feel to them. The, the plastic feels very much like a kit you would buy from uh, Tamiya or uh, 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 
um, Airfix or something like that, one of those sort of manufacturers. It's in quite good detail, quite a lot of um, parts for that. But it doesn't look too difficult to build. Not doesn't look too complicated. So get that. Let's put that back in its bag. We then get the, the different type required. Um, type the different types of dice required for the game. The green being for the Americans and grey Germans when you're pulling out of the bag for which you just go move uh, um, we then get some smoke and um, fire elements to make markers and then we're into the infantry spruce so first we'll look at the um, Germans in winter clothing of um, Falschmega so there are basically three spruce, spruce all, of this, all of the same bits and pieces on them. So we'll just move those to one side and just carry on with the one sprue. So, as you can see, we get a number of head options here. And again, there's some more head options. So we get officer um, heads for, um, that are perfect for officers, as well as just standard infantry in field caps and helmets. You get a number of weapon options. Um, MP40, the rifle, usual rifle, the, the um, some of the later weapons from the later part of the war. Uh, we've also got things like the um, Sten gun, which is quite interesting. And we've also got one on this side with the Russian machine gun. So there's plenty of options on there to, to um, filled out with your um, German troops to make them pretty um, pretty uh, sort of sort of harsh units to um, fight go up against a lot of firepower with, within these within these units um, as usual with warlord plastics they're nicely sculpted nice and chunky uh, these should be interesting to paint build and paint so the next ones we have are the US troops. Now we get four sprues of the US troops. Uh, and don't forget, the, you know, the reason being is the Germans will be veterans, whereas the American troops will be regular, apart from, I think, they, the HQ guys, they're veteran. Um, which is why there's more US than there are um, German. So you get four sprues. They're all the same. They're all the same. So we get another couple of um, options. So you get some bars on there. Um, we've got bazooka. We got the M1 carbines, Thompson machine guns, the standard issue rifle for the Americans, and um, we've got sniper option. Um, we get a number of heads, mostly um, helmeted, with a couple that are non-helmets with a sort of woolen cap, um, but the rest, of, the majority of them are helmeted. They're all in grey coats. Um, uh, should be quite quick and fast to um, paint these guys, and um, get another of uh, extra bits and pieces here with for them again another good um sculpts and these should be nice to build and paint and these should be a pan of quite a fast one fast build and paint because of your pan most of the car um, paint color is going to be brown for the great coat oh and there's a m3 grease gum as well as in amongst the um, number of weapons you can get on this these guys yeah quite a good quite a good set quite like those we then get some car we get the um 
data card for the M the M8 Greyhound and the M20. So again, if you're wanting a scout, you would go with the M20. And of course, obviously, it's only got machine um, heavy machine gun, the M50 caliber. But if you go with the M8, there is the light anti tank gun, and as well as the M50, the M50 heavy machine gun. So it gives you a, the M8 gives you a slightly better firepower. We've then got the bases, the standard um, lipped bases from Warlord. So. Then we have the numerous counters. For, for the game. So, pretty standard. And then finally, we have an A5 soft cover version of the rule book. Handy little size rule book. Third edition. So we get it. It's, it's got an introduction to the game. Then it goes on to the history um, of the uh, conflict. Now, this is the bit where I've got my I've got one my form my only fault with the with this um I say rule book, but yeah, so with the rule book is when we go through the history, it covers quite a lot. Uh, of World War Two, um, right up, right through um, early through mid, and then up to late war, and it includes the Asian, the Asian um, war as well. But this is where I get, a, I have a bit of a bugbear. Now it covers everything within Asia, apart from China. It doesn't cover anything about China. Um, and the conflict that occurred in China. Now, for those that may may or may not know, the, the Chinese were um, fighting the Japanese from around 1931 right through to 45, because um, they were initially fighting in Manchuria um, around 31 um, onwards until um, Japanese uh, occupied that territory. Then in 1937, Japan invaded main, the rest of China. And then it was, you had two forces in China. You had the, the KMT uh, Nationalist Force, who mainly fought um, combined, combined forces, fought combined war warfare. So traditional battles. And then you had the military of, from the communist side, also fighting the Chinese, but in a um, in a quite a heavy guerrilla style campaign, um, and there were quite a lot of set of battles in China during that period, um, which I think it's a missed opportunity. I, I think they haven't covered they really they haven't covered it, and it's I think it's a more missed opportunity for especially for. Anyone who wants to play Japanese, you've you've limited what they they're limited to to only fighting against the Americans. Where you know, if the Japanese conflict was covered, they could be fighting the setback pieces against um, the nationalist forces um, or trying to contain the guerrilla warfare. I mean, there were some quite famous battles during this period in 1937, the Shanghai, um, which involved the um, quite famous defence of the Xi'an warehouse, uh, which was made been made is popularised in the film 800. So I, I feel that's kind of a missed opportunity there, not including the conflict in China, um, because the conflict in China pretty much tied up around 400,000 um, Japanese troops. Um, Japan got bogged down in China trying to um, take it um, 
And I think had they taken China whole, uh, been able to use what they intended to do with China, which was turn it into a, um, a war factory and make use of the resources available in China, the war would have gone differently um, to in, in, in Asia. Um, they probably would have still have lost once the Americans became involved, but it might have gone on for longer than 45. Who knows? But I think that, that is still an important chunk of the Asian conflict to have missed out. And I kind of, that's my only disappointment with with, with the um, the rules and the, the background information. Otherwise, I, I haven't really found anything yet to complain about. Um, as with it, its um, rule book, it's, as usual, it's laid out really, really nice. It's got some great artwork in there. Um, looking at some of the, some of the um, videos that have been done previously by other um, content creators and and as well as um, stuff that uh, Warlord have put out about the rules, the rules look like they've improved quite, nice, quite a lot and quite nicely. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting a game and I'm getting read up on the um, rules. But yeah, it's it's a it's a good solid rule book as as usual. Um, they have included some information regarding the armies, the main armies, um, during the conflict. So you've got uh, British, German, American, Japanese. Um, Russian, and it just gives you some basic information about putting together um, forces for those in th th those um, armies, uh, and it gives you rules for the sort of tanks. So, if anyone is wanting to look into the Chinese conflict uh, and build out a Chinese army they can it, that is that is possible to build out a nationalist army um, using because obviously um, during that period China didn't build um, a lot of their own weapons and armour and they bought in um, armour from else, elsewhere so you, they, there is a mix of some British some German um, some Russian kit that they used um, in the early part of the war. In the later part of the war, they went on the Lend-Lease program. Um, and so they would have used heavily a lot a lot of um, American and British equipment. But early in the war, it was a bit of a scattergun approach um, because the, the nationalists also, they incorporated into them, to their armies, the warlord armies. who And there was all kinds, the warlord arm, armies or equipment from all over the place. So a bit, little bit of research uh, and you can build, you quite easily build out a Japanese, um, Japanese, a Chinese force. Um, and you should find most of the bits and pieces they used in here. Because a lot of them, it was just early war stuff. So there, there have been Vickers light tanks, uh, T-26s, for instance, uh, um, some armoured cars. So there was some Rolls-Royce armoured cars available, um, some of the Russian armoured cars knocking about. And, and equipment-wise, it was a mix of German, British, uh, and French sort of small arms. Uh, they, had, they had the licence to build their version of the... German issued standard rifle. They also had a uh, ability to build out a version of the Bren gun. Uh, and so, yeah, so you can quite easily build a Chinese force by just by um, a bit of research and then using what's in, in this rule book. So as a starter set, it's quite a good solid starter set. Um, you get nice two nice um, forces um, to play about with. You get a nice chunk of terrain. 
and then you get all the all the elements you need to play play the game, including the rule book. And I do like the fact that the rule book's in a nice compact A5 um, format because that's easy to carry around. Um, you know, when you go to go gaming at friends' house or down a club, I think I will eventually get a hardback version. Um, but I'm not, it's not something I need to rush to get. Um, I like the fact that um, it's got the rules for uh, the main armies that most people will play. So whilst we're waiting for army books to come down the line, you know, third edition versions of the books, uh, we can still build a force with what's in the, in the um, rulebook. My only disappointment is the fact that they kind of missed out the conflict in China, because I think that's quite a big, important um, chunk of the uh, a Asian um, side of World War II, uh, um, and a, quite a big chunk of history to miss out, really. Um, but that's my only bugbear with this, with, with this, um, I would say starter set, because it's not really part of the rules. Um, and maybe that's something they do later on, they cover that in another, in another book later on, maybe. But I think it should have, there should have been a write-up about that conflict in amongst the, the history. They don't need to cover the Chinese forces or anything like that, but it should have been, I think, a, a, a chunk of write-up saying, you know, Japan and China were fighting from X from period, say, 31 in Manchuria, and then uh, Japan invaded China in 1937. And some of the sort of maybe, maybe some of the key battles um, that occurred, such as um, Shanghai. Um, but otherwise, it's an impress it's an impressive starter set. It's a good um, starter set to get your teeth into, especially for people who've not played bot action before. Um, and for the price, you get quite a lot. I mean, you get two nice forces. You get a vehicle, um, a Greyhound Eight. So to purchase that separately, you're looking at over twenty pounds. Um, the rule book, I think, separately it's again another thirty pounds on flat. So you soon you start pricing that up, and you're getting way more than what you pay for. And um, so for value wise, it's really good as well. Um, and I'm looking forward to sort of kickstarting um, bolt action again. I've got quite a bit of bolt action stuff. Um, I just need to sort of clean and tidy up some of the forces and sort of work out what I've got. Uh, so I'm looking forward to some of the books coming on down up further down the line and some more maybe new plastics and stuff like coming um in the next sort of year or so to um back up this new um new set of rules and new starter set so that's all for now don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you next time